Hello everybody and welcome to the Zest Hive design process. The picture here shows the Zest headquarters in Dorset. Buckminster Fuller's design philosophy was that we cannot better the world by talking to it. Philosophy to be effective must be mechanically applied. In order to design things we need to um, go through a quite specific process. But Mr. Fuller said that to better the world, we need to design things that will do so. The planet's ecosystem is a symbiotic one. We deserve our place within it to foster life, support evolution and postpone death. No species is an island, but we are the only one that knows that. We are special now. There can be and no more comprehensive and mutually beneficial symbiotic relationship on the planet than ours with honeybees. But we will come to that later. Much is made by beakers, bee bee beekeepers of the ambition to emulate the concept of natural when it comes to bee habitats such as caves and holes in trees. But bees struggle to survive and thrive happily in many of them. We can help them on this matter with the design of the Zest Hive, which, with sympathetic management, is conducive to both their needs and ours. The way we do this is by doing more with less. Before we start talking about beehive design, I would like to discuss the design process itself. Buckminster Fuller was an architect and a general systems theorist. In many ways, his philosophy is more important than his buildings. It is that all successful technical advances made by humans are the result of doing more with less through the process of design science. The field in which this primary principle of doing more with less works is essential to do more with less energy. It is the better mousetrap concept. The battle also begins here between the use of fossil fuel energy and renewable energy. Buckminster Fuller suggested nearly a century ago that over time we must use the compact energy deposit account found in fossil fuels to kickstart our access into the dispersed renewable energy current account, which is a forever energy source. Only then can humanity's civilised future be assured. There are many examples of doing more with less and all of you will be able to think of some. How about the push bike, which gave humans the ability to visit afar with ease without rounding up the horses, doing more for humanity's hybrid vigour or heterosis than any other device invented until the motor car and then the Boeing 747. I invite you to also consider the mobile phones that you all have. Its basis began more than a century ago with the radio valve, which is simply a gate through which electrical signals can pass in one direction. Radio valves were superseded by the transistor in the 1960s and then by the microchips now in your phones. They all control, contain one-way electrical gates just like the radio valves but with shockingly more of them. The AK-47 and atomic weapons are similar darker examples of doing more with less but I will also give you one simple example that changed history and gave us the British Empire. Let us consider Nelson's triumph at Trafalgar in 1805. It was, in fact, a foregone conclusion. Despite having half the number of smaller ships than the combined French and Spanish fleet, the British gun technology and technique allowed their cannon to be fired every four minutes, instead of the French and Spanish every 12 minutes. The Spanish fleet swiftly and without error changed the British and French Spanish ships from weapon platforms into burning wrecks. Britannia then ruled the waves and was, as a consequence, able to build the British Empire unhindered, 
On such small matters as the rate of cannon fire is history made and an English-speaking world predicated. Design Science After doing more with less, the second revelation of Buckminster Fuller was the concept of design science to achieve that aim. While the concept of doing more with less is the ambition, the mechanism to achieve that is the process of design science in which science takes a part to understand them, but without design has no purpose. And design puts things back together to make a useful object, but without science is just good taste. Science in most schools and educational establishments is currently carried out in the science block and design in the art block, where the priority of good taste may override utility. While the ambition is to do more with less through the process of design science, the method by which this can be achieved is design method, which contrary to popular belief can be taught. Flashes of divine inspiration are not needed, just blood, sweat, tears and a dogged focus on the brief. Design method. Design method has five stages that the designer ranges over in a non-lineal manner. The first is stating the brief. The first and most important task is to state the objective or the brief. This is the most important and the most difficult task. It will change over time. The initial brief for the Zest Hive mission was to design a beehive that was appropriate for use in the third world and which uses local materials such as bamboo for the internal frames and a mud brick external envelope. Over time, it morphed into what you see now, but for the developed world. It became a beehive design for better bee health and beekeeper wealth. Indeed, doing more with less. The second part of the design method is to do the research. This is where the science in the design science dichotomy is carried out. If the brief is simply to ease your hunger, then go to research the fridge. If it is to go to the moon, much, much more research is needed, of course. But the task is the same in principle, fulfilling the brief. The third part of design method is to carry out the design. This is the elusive creative leap stage, but the principle of doing more with less brings clarity and direction. Do nothing for reasons of good taste. It is the last resort of the uncreative and a refuge for scoundrels and charlatans. The fourth part is to construct the design. This is the acid test of your design's workability. And the fifth and final part is to obtain feedback on the design's efficiency. This, these design science stages in the design method are not lineal but circular. One stage always causes a revisit of previous stages until the end. To be successful, drop the ego and be dispassionate. But let us now talk about beehive design. Honey beans are naturally on the side of the gods. They are renewable energy collectors. They forage to collect honey and pollen from widely dispersed sources, being a renewable form of food energy only once removed from sunshine. They also raise the total fertility of the ecosystem up to five kilometres away. Truly amazing, but let me give you the short history of beehive design, starting with a straw skep, followed by the removable frame hive that is 150 years old and still amazingly in common use despite being deadly to bees. The Zest Hive for better bee health. The Zest Hive concept improves bee health by being warm and dry rather than cold and damp. We have grown to accept that there is a crisis in honey bee health in which considerable numbers of bees die. It is about 30% a year, mostly to Nosema in the winter, which is caused by cold and damp. We have a failed parasitic symbiotic relationship with honeybees rather than a successful mutual one. We need to brush up our act, starting with the hives that we use to put them in because currently they are deadly. 
we can provide luxury accommodation that would not normally be available to them and would even be better than that which is naturally available to them. It has top B access and ventilation without any cooling stack effect. Traditional thin walled wood hives have an entrance at the bottom and ventilation at the top which leads to a vertical cold draft. Not only that, but the bees then block up the ventilation, leading to condensation under the roof which drips on the bees. The bees like humidity, which prevents the pupa becoming desiccated, but water is another matter entirely. Thermal insulation and thermal mass of the external envelope assist the bees in thermoregulating the zest colony, allowing it to rise easily to the ideal of 37 degrees determined by the bees. This speeds the biological process, reducing the time in the cells for the varroa mites to mature so their numbers fall. Thermal insulation, that is resistance to the passage of heat expressed as open brackets are closed brackets, of the zest hive's external envelope is 39 times better than the traditional thin-walled wood hives. The thermal mass of the zest hive also assists the bees in thermoregulating the zest colony, allowing it to rise easily to the ideal determined by the bees. The thermal mass carries the heat of the day into the cool of the night and the cool of the night into the day. This thermoregulation assists the bees in determining the colony temperature speeding the bee's pupation time and reducing again the time in the cells for the varroa mite to mature. It is a less alone hive. Conventional wood hives need to be visited and inspected every nine days to ensure that they do not swarm and that they have enough space. The bees in a zest hive are slow to swarm. They need to be visited just five times in the year for 1. Clean spring clean and inspection. 2. Expand the space available to the colony as the colony expands in May. And 3. Do the same again in June. 4. In mid-July insert the queen excluders to reduce her laying space and separate her from the frames with honey. And 5. Collect the honey in late August. The bees do not often die in a zest hive. 30% of colonies in traditional hives die in the winter. The Zest Hive for Beekeeper Wealth. It is a DIY hive made from ready available cheap materials. A third of the purchase and running cost for the same honeycomb area than a wood hive. It does a great deal more for a great deal less than a traditional hive. It raises the fertility of the local ecosystem up to five kilometres away at a fundamental level. The value of that is far more than that of the honey that is harvested. It is maintenance free and let alone management. Being disease free allows the beekeeper more time to either have more hives or spend less time on those they do have. There are no wax foundation costs. This needs constant replacement with traditional hives, but zest hives bees make their own wild honeycomb drawn out on a lattice grid to act as a discipline. They are better tempered bees. Inspecting a traditional beehive emulates how a bear would do it, which is to break it up and spread it about. The zest hive needs only one frame to be removed and inspected at a time. The bees do not swarm readily but supersede. Why would bees want to leave a comfortable habitation designed for them as a biological system? The bees do not die in winter. The number of colonies can be increased in the summer by making another colony as an artificial swarm at the other end of the zest. Two colonies of bees alive in the spring gives unaccustomed options. Only surplus pollen is harvested. In traditional hives, the pollen is harv harvested as the bees enter the hive by forcing them through a mesh. In a zest, it is harvested from the frames when the honey is also harvested. Equipment storage. 
in a zest is not needed. All the equipment is kept in the hive. It may have bees on it or just be stored in there. The four kilograms maximum left of a frame in a zest is the is of a honey filled zest frame. In a traditional hive was invented now, the health and safety regulations would prevent its use on the basis of the load lift of a box of honey. It can only be sold as a custom and, and practice item. Only one visit is needed to collect honey in a zest. Traditional hives require three visits. No queen excluders are needed, but they are available and can be used to separate the queen and brood from the storage of honey later in the season. It is highly robust. Traditional hives have a limited life stem being made of wood, whereas the zest is made of aerated concrete. Badgers and woodpeckers are bemused by them. Now a summary. It's better by design. The zest hive does more with less. The intended consequence of the zest hive in design is its improved honeybee health. The zest hive gives a warm, dry hive environment compared to a traditional thin-walled one. Nasema, the primary cause of 30% of colony deaths in winter, is caused by cold and damp. Other diseases are also exacerbated by cold and damp. A DIY hive as far as possible for those that are inclined. A circular saw is needed to make the frames which are simply gun stapled strips of wood. It is maintenance free as far as possible. Traditional wood hives may last up to 20 years but the zest hive needs no maintenance at all. Less than a third of the cost to make the same honeycomb face area. The zest hive has an equivalent volume of five traditional wood brood boxes. It meets the health and safety requirements. Lifting a traditional wood box full of honey would be prohibited under the, the health and safety laws. Certainly many beekeepers have back problems and ladies are deterred or stopped from keeping bees. Let alone management is possible. A zest hive needs just five visits to manage them well. A wood one needs many more. Unintended consequences of the uh, zest hive are that it is functionally varroa free. This was discovered by a lady zest owner who refused to treat for it until it occurred. It did not occur. Our best analysis as to why this is, is that the warm, dry, yet humid internal environment of a zest hive allows the bees to hatch earlier. This gives the varroa mites less time to mature in the bee pupa cells, causing them to die back exponentially, having lower than replacement numbers. It is already known that they do not like humidity from a flawed laboratory test. There is less swarming and more superseding. Why leave a perfectly sensible colony space that can be expanded and contracted by the beekeeper as the bees need to vary over the season? It is a better tempered hive. Bad tempering bees is usually caused by the dearth of food to feed and keep the larva warm. Less winter feeding is required. About half the amount of honey is needed in a zest to overwinter compared to a traditional hive. Plastic lattice frames for honeycomb. These were only produced because not all people who wish to keep bees are practical at DIY. A plastic top bearer frame. This, was an, this contains the bee entrances and ventilation slots, but holes in the zest hive walls can be drilled to serve the same function. The unintended consequence of the zest hive is a rejection by silence of the zest hive concept by the academic, commercial, institutional and government bodies that claim to represent bees and beekeepers. You will need to be cognizant that any revolutionary design will be first met with laughter followed by aggression until finally it is seen to be self-evidently correct. The more radical the design, the longer this process will take.